thank you. Um, I'm going to be speaking to you good people today about feminist activism. Yeah, woo, yeah. Um, so as soon as I've dropped that F word then, some of you might be thinking all sorts of things about what I'm going to say and perhaps about me as well. And I always find that it's best to get all of these things out of the way at the start so we can all move on together on the same page. Now, we all know all the stereotypes about feminists, don't we? We could probably recount them now just off the tops of our heads. Let me see. Hairy-legged, radical, lesbian, man-hater. People always say these things like they're a bad thing. Hmm? <laughs> I'm glad you laughed, because that was a joke, by the way. And before we go on, it is important you know that some of my best friends are actually men. <laughs> Seriously, though, all these sorts of prejudices do is silence ideas and theories which, if nothing else, provide an interesting angle by putting a gender lens onto world problems. So I'd ask you just to bear with me for the next 12 minutes and we'll see where we go. It's actually these sorts of very myths and misunderstandings about what feminism is and isn't that's what I'm going to be talking to you about today. And I'm going to be addressing perhaps the biggest myth of all, the myth that feminism is about equality. Now, I've been going on about these issues now for over 20 years. Yes, I am older than I look. Um, feminism is a great anti-aging product. It really keeps you young, as I can attest to that here. So I've been actively engaged in uh, feminism since I left home as a teenager to live at a women's peace camp. And since then, I've been engaged mainly in policy work in my career and in campaigns and activism against male violence against women and children. Domestic abuse, rape, prostitution. Yet, not exactly heartwarming topics to spend your spare time on, it is true. But in 2004, I founded the London Feminist Network. And together, we revived the London Reclaim the Night March which is a women's nighttime march against street sexual harassment, rape and abuse. That's a picture of the march there behind me, where it regularly drew around 5,000 women closing down the streets of London every year on the 25th of November, which is the United Nations International Day to end violence against women. Now, when we started that march, some of us had just been at a meeting when we'd been hearing about statistics on gender-based violence in the UK. Statistics like these. That there are an estimated 80,000 rapes every year in the UK. Over 400,000 sexual assaults. One in four women live with domestic abuse. And every week in this country, on average, two women are murdered by a violent male partner. And we were thinking, why aren't we marching in the streets about this? So we set up Reclaim the Night. And clearly it resonated, because it became the largest of its kind. It inspired other towns and cities to do the same all over the country. And in fact, it formed a key part of what was later called the resurgence, or sometimes a third or fourth wave, of feminist activism that seemed to have started in our country since the early 2000s. Now, you might be wondering why I've spent so much time on this and why this work is so important to me. And sometimes, when I was up too late at night, like this, answering loads of emails, I did ask myself that question as well, actually. But I can tell you why it's so important to me. And the answer is because I'm a woman. And there doesn't really need to be any answer other than that. I could tell you about the times that I've been threatened or assaulted, which I have been. But do you know what? I shouldn't have to because all women know those fears, whether something has happened to you or not. And in that sense, all women are survivors. And to be honest, nobody should have to appeal to us to care about these things based on what awful thing has happened to them. We shouldn't have to wait until we can say, oh, I care about these things because a friend of mine was raped or a family member was raped. 
Both are true in my case, as it happens, but I'm sure they're true for many women, as they may be truths for people in this room, just as there undoubtedly will be survivors of these crimes in this room. Or I could say to you that this work is important to me because I think that together we need to build a better world for the next generation, and I could speak to you as a parent, for example, which I am. I have a two-year-old son. But I didn't need to have a child to know that the world needs to change. I knew that for all your children. I knew that for everyone's children decades before I became a parent myself. Now, those statistics and some of those issues that I've mentioned so far, those are the sorts of things that feminism as a social movement is trying to address. It is perhaps the oldest and most powerful social justice movement that the world has ever known. It's too bad, then, that most people don't even know what the term means. But that's not surprising, considering it's been plastered on everything from T-shirts to scented candles and is used to sell everything under the sun. And consequently, it means nothing. So what is it, then? Feminism is the term for the women's liberation movement. The clue, therefore, is in the name. It's a movement to liberate women and all of society from patriarchy, by which I mean a world where men dominate every mainstream institution of power and influence politically and culturally. Now, unless we believe that men, and just so happens white men, just really naturally, biologically are the bestest and cleverest leaders on the entire planet, if we don't believe that, then we have to deduce that something else has been keeping women back. And it's probably not that they didn't do enough affirmations. <laughs> it's probably structural inequalities like sexism. And when you start talking about challenging and changing structural inequalities, that's big. That's revolutionary. And so, as with all social justice movements, actually, feminism is revolutionary. And that's why it's about way more than just equality. But when asked what it is, that's the most common response that people will give. They will say, yeah, feminism is about human rights, it's about equality. Maybe we don't even need the term feminism, actually, anymore. We could just get rid of it and replace it with something like human beingism, or something like that. <laughs> However, Rectifying what is a fundamental imbalance in our world between women and men requires a movement of its own. And it necessitates changing the whole of society. Because when we look at society just as it is, we find that it doesn't really work for a lot of people anyway. And not just women. And feminists have certainly not been struggling for centuries just for equality with unequal men. Because we have to ask, equality with whom? With the 4,000 men who took their own lives last year, making up a whole three quarters of the national suicide statistics. Those men? Well, here's another number for you. 82,000. That's the number of men currently languishing in our prisons many of whom have been failed by institutions that should have protected them. Men who are care leavers, who are victims of violence, poverty, mental illness and addiction. Those men? Or what about the young black men dying on our streets while in the custody of our police? I'm using those examples to make a point, of course. What I'm not trying to do is suggest that women don't know all those issues as well. Because they do, don't they? They just have them all wrapped up in a special little pink gendered prism just for them. We could ask the black women in this country who are assaulted by the police as well. We could ask the women in prison. We could ask the women who are trapped in the mental health system and blamed for their own abuse histories. But you might be thinking, when we aspire to this thing, equality, we don't mean examples like that. We mean equality with men who are successful, who are doing well. 
we mean that women should be able to be CEOs as well. As indeed they should, and I support that. But what we must be careful not to do here is to confuse feminism with sex discrimination legislation. Because a few women rising to the top in this status quo is certainly a win for anti-discrimination law, but it's not some sort of feminist endpoint. Because as I always say, feminism is about change, not just a changing of the guard. It's not about sprinkling a few women at the top instead of men and leaving the system intact. Because too often women already know that this system is broken anyway, don't they? Because they see it from the front line. Too often it is women who are polished bright by the sharp edges of our society. And that's why their voices need to be heard. And that's why movements like feminism are so important and so vital. <laughs> Women's voices are important. Feminism is important to make those voices heard because women have such a particular viewpoint on society. And from our vantage point, we can often see where things need to be fixed. Currently, our world follows a very particular model of power and leadership. Power isn't something that is shared amongst for the benefit of all. We are taught that it is something we should use over others. And ruthless competition and hierarchy is valorized and remunerated. But those are no blueprint for any sort of future at all. And women together need to be part of building something better. It is not enough to lean in and play the game when the rules are already so rigged. This is no time, then, to settle for the crumbs from this table, no. But nor is it time to settle for a place at it, as long as the whole thing needs knocking over and crafting afresh. What is feminism, then? It is socialism, anti-racism, environmentalism, internationalism, because our movement will only be as strong as the bridges we build between all social justice movements for the planet and for all life. So I'm a feminist, yes, but I won't settle for equality, and neither should you, because feminism is about so much more than that. And as the advert goes, you're worth it. <laughs>